Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are again to talk about The Walking Dead and New Frontier, which can really be taken as the worst season from the Telltale series. Here I'm proposing a rewrite to the season, and this is my second video on the topic. If you're already a subscriber, I ask that you leave a like right now, and if you're not, I ask that you go watch the first video and decide to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy it, then come back here to resume watching this little series I'm making. So yeah, remember guys, I proposed in the last video that Clem and Javi would meet themselves in the slaughterhouse and would get out of there with the help of Trip and Conrad. We got introduced to the Prescott community, having Eleanor as the doctor and Francine as the leader. Yes, a little modification I made in the city's hierarchy. We'd make the choice of either leaving in the morning with Trip or going at night with Eleanor. Depending on the choice you made, the player would determine Mariana and Gabe's fate. One of them would die, and we'd fight like hell against the New Frontier until they retreat from the junkyard. Also, for Clementine's flashbacks, I propose more possibilities for each of them, having more interaction to their respective characters. Jane would die both by Randy's hand or by committing suicide after discovering the baby, and we would bury her. The family could or could not accompany us during this. Kenny, Edith, and Wellington would survive the first episode, not having a really sudden death or destruction. Also here, we'd have the preludes of what the New Frontier community was going to be. And in the alone ending, we'd meet Arvo, Mike, and determinately Bonnie. By the end of this flashback, Clem and AJ would be completely alone if you only shot Arvo and they could even be accompanied by Mike in case you shot Arvo only in self-defense by the fire. With all your memories refreshed, let's do it now, people. <coughs> Ties That Bind Part 2 is an episode that bugs me a bit till this day. I mean, it's actually my favorite episode of this season, but at the same time, is by far, no doubt, the shortest one ever in Telltale history. You can easily finish this episode in the less than an hour, and I'm not even kidding. This is really outrageous. Really, think about it. What do we actually do on this episode? We have the beginning, both burying Mariana or helping Kate on her surgery. Then we have the Prescott attack. We have the roadside argument, we have the little puzzle by the Richmond underpass, Clementine's stupid short 3 minute flashback with Ava, the tunnel scene with the whole Conrad stuff, and then the David plot twist by the Richmond gates. I mean, really, that's so little amount of stuff, if you stop to think about it. And they happen so freaking fast in the episode. My guess is that this episode just got so short because Telltale wanted to atone for their stupid schedules for the release of the game and decided to release two episodes at once. So they basically released a rushed and short episode here. Remember how I said I was excited about this two episode release in my previous video? Yeah. It didn't turn out that great. Despite all of these drawbacks and poor execution, I still think that episode 2 has the most interesting plotline in the season. So, let's start this already, shall we? Beginning things, there would play out a hobby flashback in here, but it wouldn't be the stupid one from episode 2, where David's all mad about some army glass breaking, and Kate being all like, Oh, hey, I hate David. Oh. Instead, it would be the one from episode 3, where Javi, Kate, Gabe, and Mariana get out of the house in the first weeks of the apocalypse. I find this flashback actually pretty good, exactly like I said about the one from episode 1, giving more depth to the Garcia family. On this flashback, I'd also put more interactions to Mariana. She badly says anything if compared to Gabe. I feel showing them both as kids would kind of melt our hearts, because one of them would be dead, and after the flashback ends, we'd have to bury one of them. I think it would touch a bit more of players. I would also put them mentioning a lot of David, since he's gonna appear by the Richmond gates at the end of the episode. We'd then be at the junkyard with everyone around our dead niece or nephew, 
Remember, the New Frontier guys retreated and Kate wouldn't be shot in here. Things would start pretty sadly right from the start, and then we'd head back to Prescott with the body. Arriving at Prescott, we would bury our dead relative and have the condolences for many other characters. Clementine, Tripp and Eleanor, since one of them would accompany you, but also Conrad and Francine. In this scene, it would be more clear that both of them were a couple, and also here would be an opportunity to meet Francine better. Remember everyone, I put her as the leader of Prescott on this version of the story. Things wouldn't be that clear in this scene, but we'd feel something was wrong about Francine from the start, and the player would be a bit suspicious of what it could be. I also didn't mention it in my previous video, but Prescott was supposed to have hanging as a death penalty. There are cut lines and animations actually referring to it, and one of those lines made it to the game. Pay attention to what Tripp says here on episode 1 after Clem shoots Eli, the guy who traded those defectious bullets to her. Don't be stink eyeing me! You're just lucky I didn't hang you! Yeah, pretty bizarre how these things get cut, right? Anyway, this is gonna be important later, keep it in mind. After the funeral, we'd have a big and calm exploration at Prescott. I'd put here the opportunity to talk to basically everyone. We could check on our family, having determined the dialogues for the dead relative. We could talk to Tripp by his truck, kinda like it happens with Eleanor by the med station, and Conrad at his bar. Maybe we could have more interaction with him here. Maybe a minigame, drinking and playing poker to expose more Javier's gambler personality, but I don't know. After checking on all of them, it would appear the chance to check on Clementine by the admin building, a Prescott setting in the concept art that was cut from the game. Here Clem would say that she overheard Francine saying something about the new frontier. We would investigate the admin building and we'd actually see Francine talking to someone on a walkie talkie about the new frontier coming. Francine here would betray the community she led, secretly selling Prescott to the new frontier, ordering them to take over the town. I'd put this here because in the files for the game there were evidences that Francine was supposed to betray Prescott, I think on that hostage standoff on the beginning of the episode, but I wouldn't pick up on this. I'd have her having a coward leader posture, kinda like the one character at Hilltop from the TV show. Listening to the conversation, we would barge in the room and try to interrogate her. Francine would deny everything to us and then she'd go for her gun and Clem shoots her on a reflex. Seeing the whole situation, Javi and Clem would be arrested by Tripp. We tried to make our point, telling what we heard Francine saying, but they wouldn't care and would arrest Javi and Clem. While in prison, we'd have Kate and Gabe slash Maury coming by for a visit, and we'd have to try to explain the whole thing to them and say they were in danger because the new frontier was coming. We tell them to get out of Prescott, but Javi's family would also be held there at Prescott by Trip. but they wouldn't be arrested if you know what I'm saying. Javi and Clem would be sentenced to hang in public, kinda similar to David on episode 4. We tried to make our point in front of everyone, saying that the new frontier was coming at any moment and that they were in serious danger. Tripp and Conrad wouldn't buy it, and we'd be accused of being New Frontier spies. A little before we were executed, the New Frontier would attack with that truck throwing walkers inside the walls. There wouldn't be any negotiations by the gate as the ones we already have. They would attack us without knocking the door. Right here, we would try to stay alive at first, until we joined the fight against the New Frontier. It was going to be a very action-packed sequence, instead of just, oh hey, the city's under attack, let's run away. I mean, really? In the game, Tripp seems to be the one in charge, and he just freaking leaves the people of Prescott to die? That's so stupid. No, here we'd fight more for Prescott, 
until the point where we would be forced to leave. Kate would get shot in here instead of the junkyard, and we'd flee on two cars like where I do, with still the same characters of the game. We'd stop by the road so Eleanor could make the surgery on Kate. We'd help for a while, kinda like it happens earlier in the game, until we'd then talk to, f to a few of them. Trip would say sorry for not believing him and Clem, but Conrad would still be mad, in a sort of denial for Francine's death. Here, Gabe would also freak out like he does, and if Mariana was to live, she'd just beg for everyone not to fight, crying right next to Kate. The scene would shock everyone and Conrad would back off. If Mari was alive, I'd also put her in Clem, possibly starting to bond a bit more in this episode, exactly like it happens to Gabe. From here on out, the episode would play out exactly like it does until the point of the first Clem flashback. That is, they make it to the underpass, we unblock the pass, Kate and Eleanor go ahead while we stay back, we meet Jesus, we discover that Richmond has been taken by the new frontier, and then we decide to go through the train tunnel. You and I are not a team. This is my team. The Clem flashbacks would still have a few variants depending on your season 2 ending. If Jane was killed by Randy, if you didn't let the family in, and if we shot Arvo in the alone ending, we'd basically have the Ava flashback we already have in the game. But here, despite dodging a bit of the walkers and getting to know Ava, we'd actually regroup with a few of Ava's colleagues in the rendezvous, and then we would discover that they were a part of the new frontier, with Ava rolling her sleeve up and all. If we ended up with Mike after we shot Arvo in self-defense in the alone ending, We'd be hardly surviving alongside Mike for a few time, scavenging for food, water, and supplies. I'd make their moments to be really silent here, because they were not people who exactly like each other. They've been through a lot, a lot of bad blood together. However, they'd be coping their differences to survive on this crazy world. They would do this until the point where Mike harms himself and gets a deep cut. On a pretty difficult situation, we'd then be saved by no one other than Joan herself, and a bit other new frontier goons. Joan would treat Mike's injury the best way she could. Yes, she'd be a doctor in this new version of the story. This change may not seem important now, but I promise it will be for future episodes. Joan would make us the offer to stay with them revealing as well that she was a part of the new frontier. She could or could not have the brand on her neck, that really isn't important, but we'd see the symbol and discover she was a part of the new frontier regardless. If we stick to the family in the Jane's flashback, things would be pretty similar to Mike's flashback. We'd be surviving with the family for a little time, until we're faced with the New Frontier people. Since Clint was said to be the guy who ran food production and so, I'd put him here, offering us and the family a bit of food. He'd ask us to join their community, and we would accept it. If you both had the Wellington or the Kenny ending, both flashbacks would be connected and these would be the longest ones out of all the flashbacks. First with Wellington would basically have what we had in episode 1 flashback. With Wellington being attacked by a foreign group, we'd collect our stuff and then run away with Edith and AJ. Edith would die and we'd make it to, to the woods to find Kenny's camp. We'd tell him that Wellington went through an attack, and then we'd run away from there, heading a big back south. If you stood with Kenny on his camp since the beginning, the flashback would start with them at the camp, and then they would listen to the whole shootout at Wellington, going there to see what was going on, and then running away when seeing it was destroyed. 
From here on out, both flashbacks would be equal. The time would skip a bit until Clem, Kenny and AJ are at the car, trying to find somewhere or something to help them survive, until they bumped upon the Lingard. Remember, he wouldn't be a doctor in this new version. He and Joan would have switched roles. In case you don't know, Lingard was supposed to be the main villain of the season, the leader of the New Frontier community, and his original name was Mason. It's actually funny because Melissa Hutchinson, the voice of Clementine, actually affirmed having recorded lines about this so-called Mason. I'll still put his name being Lingard though, for you people not to get too confused. Here he would offer us a place in his community and would offer us food. If it wasn't for AJ, I feel like Clem and Kenny would, re would refuse his offer, but they would end up accepting it. With all of these flashbacks, I try to give the player, again, more sensation of relevance to his choices by putting Clem and AJ and many other characters to join the New Frontier community by many means and knowing many different people in the process. How about I shoot your little boyfriend here instead? What the fuck, Conrad? From here on out, I'd put basically the same things going on in the episode. Because I really like them, having the revelation of the new Frontier brand on Clem's arm, we have the little action scene in the train tunnel, we have the Conrad standoff to use Clem as a hostage. Of course, there would be the Gabe Mariana factor, but it wouldn't change the essence of the scene that much, being still possible for the player to accept the deal or shoot in Conrad. We would find Kate by the car and head straight to the Richmond gates learning at last that David was a part of the New Frontier. Mariana would basically be shocked exactly like Gabe is by the end of this, and then the episode would end with a huge cliffhanger. People normally find A New Frontier to be the worst season in the series, as I said, and I also agree with this, but the middle to the end of this episode is where in my opinion the whole season peaks with the Conrad moment and the moment of David's reveal. Dude, this here is storytelling at its finest, and I'm not even joking. People normally say that episodes 1 and 3 are better than this one, but I have to totally disagree. Episode 1 had so much left potential by cutting the slaughterhouse escape and not making Gabe and Mariana determinant characters. And episode 3, despite being the best executed episode of A New Frontier, is just the definition of playing safe for Telltale. And the flashback on that episode actually breaks Clementine's character for me. Really, pay attention to these episode 2 clips I'm gonna play for you for a second. The other guys had this too. Oh shit. What? Well, what's wrong? Clem? I've run into these guys before. They call themselves the New Frontier. They used to be decent people, now they're something else. From what I hear, it should be a straight shot into Richmond. A train tunnel. I could lead you guys there. I just had to explain, because if they're really in control in Richmond, I can't let them see me. I just can't. So when we reach the other side of this tunnel, I'm leaving. They won't bargain with you. You don't know them. Won't know until we try. Man, Clem is just terrified of the new frontier. And it raises the question to the player, what bad could they have done to make her so afraid like this? It was a thing that the rest of the season didn't quite follow up. Quite. Now, I will talk more about that on the next video, where I'll analyze episode 3 above the law. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you so much. This was a shorter video than the last one, not only because it is by itself a shorter episode, but because this here needed less work to fix in my opinion. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet a subscriber, and comment down below what you think. I always love to know what you guys have in mind. With all of that said, thank you people a lot and we see each other on the next video. Thank you again, and 
See you when I see you. Did you piss in someone's oatmeal back there? Thought you were gonna play along. We trusted you. Knowing them, it's probably a butter knife and a stick of gum. They could have just shot us. More than once. Oh, how fucking neighborly. Oh shit, we're fucked. That's all you gotta say. What about Eleanor? Walk. Eat shit. Answer my fucking question. Ew. Calm down. Calm down? I'm not gonna fucking calm down. Eleanor's out there alone right now. Ay, Dios mío. Do you ever shut up? Occasionally.